Hi everyone, and thanks for being here. This is my first ever podcast, and we are here today with a longtime friend of mine, Angela Elizabeth, who is a psychic medium. We wish to share with you today about her skills and how she may be of value to you if you choose to use her services. Hi Angela, and thanks so much for being here today. How are you? I am well. Thank you, Ernie, for this opportunity to share with viewers. It is always wonderful to connect with new people. If you would, for our listeners, and maybe more so for those who haven't had much experience with people like yourself, would you briefly explain what you do? As an intuitive, psychic and medium, I connect with people and objects, psychometry, by connecting with their energy. Energy is universal, meaning we can connect to people in other parts of the world and read their energy by phone and email. Most psychics also use tools such as tarot cards, pendulums, crystals and automatic writing to name a few. Okay, cool. I have spoken with many psychics over the years and watched numerous videos on YouTube where they can even be used to find perpetrators of crimes that have been committed. Many of these psychics say they were born with their specific gifts. Is that the case with you? Yes, I was born with the abilities that I have, inherited from my maternal grandmother whom I never met. She was adept at tea leaf reading. Fantastic. I sometimes wish I had your skills, and at other times I am glad I don't. Tell me, even though you were born with your gifts, have you done further studies or practices to expand your skills, or did they grow naturally over time? Well, Ernie, it's a bit of both. There is always something to learn. I have spent my lifetime honing my skills and researching new abilities and traits as they come forth or as I hear about them. Learning is a lifelong goal with spiritual energy. Okay, as you know, I can be quite intuitive, yet I do not hear or see spirits or energy like you do. Would someone like me be able to learn to do what you do? And would it be difficult? Like, what would be the major blocks for someone like me to get to your level? Everyone has intuitive energy. We all use it differently. Even devout disbelievers have moments where they think of someone and run into them that afternoon or know who it is when the phone rings. We use this energy subconsciously when we are in danger as well, that tingling sense of doubt when we are about to step into something that we perhaps should not. Reading books on tarot reading and using intuitive energy is a great start to opening your own abilities. Ernie, there are also many classes available to connect with your spiritual self and increase your self-awareness. Everyone works differently, therefore everyone has something unique to teach. There are no real blocks to working with this energy, just open your mind. Wonderful, and if you would, would you please share with our audience today maybe a couple of the strangest stories of things you have either worked with or encountered as a medium? Where to start, Ernie? There are so many strange and beautiful stories. From locating lost items to connecting with loved ones who are no longer with us. I did have one person ask if I make things that come through in a reading happen. And I replied, no, I just tell what I see, sense and feel. Her reply was that everything in the reading happened as I predicted and in the order that it came through in the reading purely coincidental as I saw the events, not the order in which they were to happen. Fair enough. Sounds exciting. For those people who are sceptical of mediums, what do you usually tell them? All I ask anyone who is sceptical is to come into the reading with an open mind, have no expectation of the outcome, and ask questions to help understand what is happening. Each person has their own values and beliefs and my journey is not to tell anyone what to believe. It would be nice to open new experiences to them. Yeah, and for people who would like to improve their skills dealing with the spiritual realm, what advice would you give them, like where to start or courses they could do? A lot of spiritual work comes from within. All of it starts there, enhancing what we know is learning. That type of growth comes from experience, books, lessons and meditation. Find someone you feel you can trust, someone who makes sense to you. There is a lot of hype out there, some real, some not. Be aware of who you learn from and always adapt what you learn to suit yourself. What works for one person may not work for another. So take what you need from what you learn and leave the rest. If you need it later, you can come back to it. 
Yeah, one thing I noticed is that many psychics have had a hard life, to a point. Would you say this is part of the growth that raises a person to the next level, spiritually? Our experience in life most certainly adds to the depth from which we pull our energy. I think we have all walked a hard road, some harder than others, some physically, some emotionally, and we hide our pain. We smile and say we are fine when we are not fine at all. Psychic or not, we all grow from our path. And for some, life's experiences will grow their energy. For others, they may suppress it. This is a very individual thing. I fully agree with you there. Apart from the usual things people call psychics for, love, health and finances, what else have you worked on that is quite different from the norm and that the average psychic hasn't or doesn't deal with? I mean, have you gone to places and cleared our demons or seen such things as dogmen? And what is your own interpretation of such things? Ah yes, I have done space clearings and negative energy removal on many levels. And yes, I have seen things that I cannot to this day explain. I know what I think it was, but is there another explanation? Perhaps there is. Paranormal phenomena and creatures have many explanations. Some seem far-fetched, yet the people who have experienced these things truly believe what they have seen and felt to be real. I believe them. I can only comment on what I have seen, yet I would never discount what anyone has to say. Many say that things we call demons are protectors, and we perceive them as something different because they look scary. Uh-huh, growing up in our generation, I am sure you would have been viewed as somewhat different, or even wicked, by some people. Have you encountered much resistance in your field, and how did you overcome them? I think we have all been bullied for one reason or another. And yes, I was, and at times am still thought of as strange. For many years as a youngster, I did not talk about what I saw and felt, as I was seriously thought of as crazy, weird, a daydreamer, etc. I leave people to think what they want. I am not here to change their minds, although I have seen many become more open-minded or believers through our experiences together. I do not overcome them, I just be me, and let them be them with love and light. Understand, since you deal with things most people do not encounter, what are some of the funniest things you have come across in your line of work? Oh, there have been some amazing and funny moments over the years, from spirits moving things to a light bulb popping above the head of someone who was not being kind about their loved one, to the look on his face, and yes, he did apologize to his father. A lost wallet turned up right where I said it was after the lady searched that spot a few times already. Okay, so would you say spirits can or do have a sense of humour, or do they even enjoy human humour? That would depend entirely on the spirit, Ernie. Some are quite the tricksters, while others are all business. I find the funny ones will still get down to business. They seem to like our reaction to humour. What keeps you going? I can imagine this being quite draining. There are times that this work is very draining, and there are times when it is uplifting. It comes from both clients and the spiritual world. Sometimes the client is draining, sometimes the spiritual connection. When possible, the work is drawn through universal energy, and the energy is kind of shared, and it is far less draining. Have you ever had an NDE? And if so, would you briefly describe what happened? No, I haven't. I know you and I disagree a tad about the concept of evil. For those who don't know, I see God, or call it the universe, which is my preferred word, as unconditional love, and that consciousness or awareness is what holds the universe together and is what its most basic components are that make it up. So this then, expanding on the concept of it being omnipresent, means it is present everywhere. Having it mean it is in evil as well. Hence for me, evil is only an apparent evil. From what I understand from our previous discussions, you, on the other hand, have encountered what you consider evil spirits and demons. Therefore, if you would, how would you describe evil? And does it have any connection or relevance to the religious view of evil? Or are they different? I believe that evil comes from within, just as good does. Most people are inherently good, and we all have less than auspicious moments. But true evil to me is the harming of others or taking of lives. There are negative energies out there, and I feel that they can be cleansed 
or will fade out if left alone. We can enhance that energy by feeding it or tormenting it, but I do not feel these negative energies have ever lived as humans. Angry spirits are just that. Someone who passed and is trapped here feeling angry, confused and upset at their new position. Perhaps they do not fully understand what has happened to them in death or for the last part of their life. Yeah, I hear you. I often think about what may be in store for me in my future, and I often remind myself of what Doc Brown said in Back to the Future, Part 3. The future isn't written yet, so make it a good one. And then I recall watching documentaries about people who have had NDEs, who say everything is happening at the same time, and why time per se doesn't exist. Would you agree with that? Time, in my opinion, is a man-made entity. We work with time and calendars. Animals have always worked seasonally with migrations and breeding, yet we put numbers on parts of the day to run our society effectively and it works for us. As for NDE and feeling everything is everywhere, happening all at the same time, perhaps it has more to do with planes of energy or dimensions. Okay, I think I read somewhere that the Gnostic religion believes in the concept of there being 12 universes and mathematics says there are 11 dimensions. Do you have any thoughts on that? None of us know for sure. Unless we can go there, document and come back, there is no proof of how much is out there. I learned of seven planes of energy and nine. Right or wrong, perhaps it is down to what we believe and what works for us. I know there is an awful lot out there that we do not know and have never experienced. Okay, I am going to ask about a very controversial topic here for a sec. God. God for me is very simple. God to me is unconditional love, meaning there is no judgment and hence pure silence. This is why, I believe, Buddhists meditate to quieten their mind and reach their God potential, whereas in prayer in other religions, the person never quietens their mind and as a result, seldom receives their desires. What is your opinion about the concept of God, or do you even have one? I am open to many belief systems. I like some things about all of them, and dismiss things about them as well. God to me is an entity, something we each perceive in our own way. I would never tell anyone that their beliefs are wrong because it is their belief in God, or whichever deity they do believe in, that keeps them going and gives them hope. And in my eyes, that makes what they believe in very real, and that is very powerful. I'm going back if I may. Demons and, let's say, angels, both are in the spiritual realm, yet what is it that differentiates them? Would you say it is intention, or are they dimensionally different, even? In other words, would you say for simplicity that demons may exist in the fourth dimension, whereas angels exist in, up to, and making things up here, up to the eleventh dimension? It is possible that angels and demons are on different levels. It is also possible that we call that energy to us, good or negative, and work with it in a way that suits us best. Maybe they are even all together and share a realm, just as we share the earth. I have also watched documentaries where mediums connect with relatives who have crossed over, and it is said that they often come and look upon us, guide us, help us, and even protect us. Would you agree with that? I can say I often feel my mum, yet I do usually have to call upon her to show up. Yes, I do agree with that. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have a spiritual connection through a medium with a loved one. Many do not come back, or not in ways that we perceive anyway. Sometimes we may think we have a connection with one specific person, yet it may not be. Ask questions that only your loved one would know the answer to. I am not saying the medium is wrong. They are relaying the energy as they receive it and may not know they have a different person. I do believe our ancestors guide us from the spiritual realms. Personally, I have seen ghosts and felt them. I used to work as a night patrol security officer, and some places just have that weird, freaky vibe. And as I recently said, I feel my mum, and in addition, I felt my mum the night she passed away. This is my proof. And isn't it something that can be proven to someone else? It isn't like the sciences or the scientific method, which can be repeated and get the same result. So how do you go about explaining your reality as being true to you and the work you do? I do not try to justify what I do. I just pass any feelings, words and emotions to the person I'm working with. 
They resonate with the energy and have no doubt in their mind that what they are experiencing in that moment is very real. Spirits have been documented on film and with the EVP and recorded voice messages many times. Some disclaim, some believe. Excellent. And coming close to an end here, if someone wants to get in contact with you for a reading or any other associated work, how would they go about doing that? My number and email address are on my logo for ease of contact or find me on Facebook. Well, thank you very much, Angela, for sharing your valuable time with us today. It is hugely appreciated, and I know we have covered some very deep material here, some of which most people may not have even considered asking a medium about. I trust we haven't scared any of our audience away from the topics covered here. From my knowledge, the spiritual realm can be daunting while being absolutely fascinating at the same time. Absolutely, Ernie. I find this world fascinating, yet it can be very daunting when you have not had a lot to do with it. Angela, is there anything else you would like to share? Or once more, how would someone go about getting in touch with you for a reading or associated work? Trust your instincts, people. Trust in yourself. And if you feel uncomfortable with a reader, try someone else. You may not connect well with one medium, yet bond easily with another. I can be contacted by phone, email or Facebook, Angela Elizabeth. Thank you everyone for staying with us to the end. I trust this has given you valuable insight into a different reality than what you thought possibly existed. Stay happy, have fun and enjoy. Cheers folks and thanks again to everyone.